Hey guys, how how is it going? Um, so since moving the car here, sort of jogged my memory and a few other things. So I've managed to remember that when I used to live at home, uh, when I first bought this car, it used to be 13B Bridgeport, but with a IDA Weber, and we converted it from Bridgeport to fuel injection. Um, and lo and behold, after some digging at the parents' place. I found the throttle bodies, so beats me why I never sold them, but still got them, so they're, what are they, Microtech throttle bodies, I assume they're like 52 inch or 50 mil or something like that, fuel rail, must have bought this from Mazfix at some point in time, it's got a Mazfix sticker on the TPS, and then for some reason, not sure why, I've wanted to turn it around. So maybe I wanted the throttle cable on the back for some reason. And I must have made these little six mil aluminium plate adapters to spin the pattern around so I could spin it around on the manifold. So the manifold seems ported as well. So that's not too bad, it's good fine. Yeah, so I forgot all about this as well until uh, we moved the car. So maybe if I don't keep it turbo and we go back to 13B non-turbo ported, um, can go back to fuel in fuel injection. And then in the box where I found this, I found the computer for it. So when I first went um, EFI, from memory it was a Digi 1. And then when we put this Series 4 13B turbo in, we had to upgrade it to the series two so the original one was fuel only and it had the screwdriver things in the front here and this one's uh, electronic ignition because i'm running the 13b turbo uh, crank angle sensor and coils on this motor so that's pretty handy i wonder if it'll uh, all plug in and still turn on and then remember how i told you that well once upon a time when i went to sell the carb on Gumtree, somebody decided to come around late at night and steal the grill and the headlights rounds out of it. So I actually found out that I, I um, actually bought uh, headlights surrounds way back when, and I vaguely remember it. I'm pretty sure I bought them on Gumtree too, from a dude in Algester, uh, I think, from memory. But yeah, luckily I did because uh, they seem pretty hard to find today and most of them seem to be reproductions but they're not overly budget friendly um, so I'm pretty happy about that and then I also ordered um, uh, a reproduction grill because finding one in good condition was pretty hard um, but the reproduction one doesn't look too bad I haven't tried it on the car but I'm pretty happy I think it was only like couple hundred bucks so it was all good and I guess another thing that I managed to find was an old photo album so I've got pictures of uh, when I was fixing this thing back when I was a teenager so this is the old photo album I found while digging through some boxes um, so obviously when I was a teenager computers wasn't a thing so this is it here um, from memory this is still card 13B Bridgeport Carb, and this is KP Performance, Kevin Potts at Salisbury. It was the first tune on the car um, when I first got it running, and I rebuilt this motor myself. And for memory, you could only tune it so far because when it started getting oil pressure, it was leaking out one of the rotor housings. Um, I pinched an O-ring in the thing from memory. And then, yeah. So this is it at home after the tune somebody got out the blue spray paint by the looks and I think that's with Saab wheels on it so yeah it's got the Saab wheels on it but anyway and uh, oh, I painted them black so this is this is the grill and the headlight surrounds that got pinched off, gum, off the ad on it fighting this badge in the center here I don't know if you can see it, but this badge seems to be very pricey. But I've got pictures of it um, 
when we put the bucket seats in it, the copper bucket seats from now on you. And then this must have been when it was 13B turbo, because that's the Digi 2 with hand controller. And that's the hose for the map sensor. And then apparently this thing's got Commodore front calipers and Magna rotors. And then this is a picture of it when it was uh, Tenerife Bridgeport and we converted it to EFI. So the induction noise was much, much louder than a Weber from memory. Um, but it's still running, looks like RX7 Series 2 electronic ignition. So this would have been on a fuel only computer. Um, and for memory, uh, my old man keeps reminding me that I blew this up doing donuts at the end of the street while I was an apprentice, so, and that's the main reason why we went 30 mid turbo. Um, another picture, that's the fuel system. Actually made that at work as a foreigner. So, then it has a Bravo diff, which is in the pictures. Another one of the interior, and this must have been after we blew it up at the end of the Calder stack. So we've got a front mount in it now. And then Series 4, turbo motor with the Dyson uh, cast manifold to get the turbo up over the steering box and then I did all the cooler piping and whatnot. so yeah that's it some other things cordier things and then Nissan things a few Nissans so anyway so I've started thinking about what, how we're going to fix this beast um, so from what I can tell having a look at it is that it's got no coolant at the moment or water but it is pretty light brown there's big rust flakes in it and everything uh, so we might give that a flush and see what goes on but I think what's happened is that this bottom hose is somehow broken or rusted or something's gone on down here and it's dropped all the coolant or the water or whatever was in it out the bottom so that's what it looks like it's down here in the radiator maybe but it's pretty crunchy I don't know if you can hear that very crunchy so it's definitely settled some stuff in it and then other than that I suppose if we have a look at the oil probably not the best place to put a pot it uh, still has oil in it so it's still up to uh, halfway to full. It smells very petrolly. Uh, I'm not sure that's good or bad. But the oil is um, still clean. I don't know if you can see it. Still clean, still yellow. It's not very black. So it um, might be good. And I suppose the probably most important thing is working out whether the thing still turns over so from memory they rotate this way and lo and behold it hasn't seized up at all and that's probably compression and so it sounds like it still has compression um, probably get a battery on it and see see if we can uh, do a compression check on it see what happens and then probably see if it'll build the oil pressure so maybe that's like the first things to do before getting too carried away seeing electronically what turns on with it and then yeah see if we can get oil pressure and um, see if it has any compression and then I suppose that's all good we're pulling the fuel system out getting that all replaced Cleaned. I'm sure the injectors will be clogged. I think sitting over 10 years with premium unleaded in it, I assume it's premium, could be unleaded, I was pretty cheap, um, has just clogged everything up, it's probably all turned to gel. And then yeah, hopefully the computer plugs in and powers up and everything powers up and we can um, have a crack at seeing if it'll start. But I've had a look around it. Body wise, it's just mainly old paint. Like I'm pretty sure I painted this in acrylic. So 
but there seems to be a rust bubble here and there's I'd say it's got the usual rust through here it feels like it's lifting but then it when you feel it that's pretty rough and that's pretty smooth so I wouldn't be surprised if that's all bog in there and then I'm pretty sure this trim has no clips and I've sigur flexed it on having looked at it it's got sicker flex through the bottom here and sicker flex through the top so I wouldn't be surprised if in my youth I've broken all the clips and glued it on but this door's got a dent in it here for some reason so maybe we can fix that and then it's got a bit of rust down here but not too bad just have to open it up well, it probably gets a bit worse down below open it up and give it a look behind the guard it's pretty clean and then I'm gonna say this is all bog, bog you see where all the cracks are I'd say it's all sunken in and whatnot but the back of it's not too bad it's just the usual where the paint's cracked it's just got some light surface rust and then the lower trim's not in bad shape oh I suppose there's a bit of rust there so that shouldn't be too hard to fix this almost looks like the worst of it because it's it's obviously had a plate in it at some point and I'm going to assume it was just like bogged in as a reinforcement so I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, got chicken wire or something in it at a guess but that's also lifted up and then you've got a few little spots underneath the bottom of the screen but they don't look like too hard to fix but in general it's probably stored pretty well because it's been out in the rain for at least 12 years so and then I just haven't started it like once I put it in the garage probably after a short period of time I've just forgotten about it and just let it sit so uh, maybe the next video we'll see if we can uh, do a systems check and fire it up see what happens see how much money we've got to dump into it get it back into on the road anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the trip down memory lane and uh thanks for watching guys